Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm the Timmeister and welcome to a brand new City Skyline series. Welcome to the city of Rockport. This city will be built using only vanilla in-game assets, meaning no custom assets from the Steam Workshop will be used. I will however be using about 20 or so mods to make building easier. Most of these mods are simply quality of life mods that don't stray too far from the vanilla game. This will just make it easier to build realistic and beautiful interchanges and parks and whatever else. The map that I'm playing on is called Monterey by Alex and Teddy Radko. I'll post the link down in the description because I think this map is absolutely fantastic. I think it'll be a ton of fun to build on. This map has a little bit of everything. We have valleys, we have mountains, rivers, desert plains. It's going to be both fun and challenging to build on. The inspiration for this build comes from Auckland, New Zealand. I think this map has similar features and the fact that it has all these different kinds of terrains makes sure that I'll be able to take advantage of all the game's custom content and DLCs. The idea for this map is there's going to be the main city in the middle and my plan is to make smaller towns on each corner of the map, similar to how I did with the Timbuktun series a few years ago. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. I'm going to start off with the main central downtown area. Now my first task is going to be developing the city's rail network. And as you can see, there's already a bunch of rail lines that are laid out for me, so I will be taking advantage of those as they are. Now with this city, I want to be historically conscious. And what I mean by that is I want to lay down the city's infrastructure in a, a sort of historical fashion. I, I want to make this as realistic as I possibly can. So I want to sort of pretend like these rail lines were here far before many of the streets were and far before many of the highways that are running through the city were. So similar to how a lot of Western American cities are. And the reason why I'm doing this is it's going to force me to build these highways around the city streets and not the other way around as it was in real life. So it's going to add an element of challenge to the series and it's also going to add a bit of realism as well. So that's why I am focusing solely on the rail network and like I said it's going to force me to work around these rail lines further down the line in this series as the city expands outwards and, and whatever the case may be in the future. So of course the city is going to have a quite robust rail network. I'm going to be focusing on rail a little bit more than I have ever before. Um, as you're seeing me do here, I'm not simply merging all of these five or six lines that head into the rail station down to one. I want to actually take advantage of the different rail lines coming into the main station here downtown. So I'm going to be building a small rail interchange here and it will help manage traffic in the future with this as well. So instead of having freight and passenger rail on the same lines, I want to try to segregate them as much as I can. It may not always be possible as it is in real life, but we'll just see how traffic pans out as the city develops and we may have to make some changes accordingly in the future. I'd like to take a second to explain why I'm starting this series. Um, I do kind of miss the old format in which my videos were. So back in the Timbuktun days and, and a number of other series that I started, um, I was building in a time lapse format, meaning that you know my footage is accelerated by two, three, four, sometimes five times just to squeeze in as much content as I can in a 15 to 20 minute video. And this is sort of my favorite style to build in in a lot of cases because I can just mindlessly build uh, while I'm talking to my friends on Discord and doing other things at the same time where I don't have to be 100% focused on the game at all times. Uh, it is a little bit more challenging to edit afterwards, I'll be honest. It's a lot more work. Uh, but as far as playing the game, it's a little bit more fun for me. 
And what also compelled me to start this series was I kind of miss the old Timbuktun days where I used to plop entire cities. And the reason for that is because I have complete control on how an area looks. Well, I shouldn't say complete control because sometimes even when plopping an entire area, it doesn't quite end up the way I imagined. But in most cases, it, you get a pretty decent idea of how an area is going to look, and it usually ends up looking quite similar to that. Far more than it would when you're zoning. Um, when you're zoning in the game, you have no control whatsoever on what an area is going to end up looking like. The game does a decent job at creating these really nice neighborhoods, for example, with just zoning. Uh, but oftentimes, you know, you don't have like that... that level of realism when you're just relying on the game's zoning which is why i really wanted to start a plopping series as we'll call it but i don't miss the 10 fps that accompanied you know hundreds of custom assets um it creates very realistic and compelling cities but the performance hit is I, i'm not sure if it's really worth it um, it got frustrating at times when the game crashed often. Um, the, the FPS <laughs> was the biggest factor, the very low FPS. So this is the main reason why I, I, I'm starting this series. It's going to be a combination of the old, I'll, I'll call it the Timbuktun days, where you know we, we were building a very nice city in this sort of um, time-lapse format, where all the areas had different names and different lore different stories. I'd like to bring that back with Rockport, um, but in a vanilla fashion. Okay, so I'm not going to have that huge performance hit. And I think this is also going to make the game a little bit more relatable to people, um, especially people with, you know, may maybe computers that are not as performant, uh, that can't support hundreds of assets and mods. Maybe you're limited to just the vanilla assets and can afford a few mods. So I think this may be, uh, this will help this series to be a little bit more relatable to people. You know, they'll, you'll be familiar with all the buildings being placed down with all the DLCs and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be fun to play around with the vanilla assets. What's awesome too, is there's so much custom content in City Skylines now made by creators that you may be familiar with from the Steam Workshop, such as King Leno, uh, who else do we have? We have Avanya, we have Mr. Mason with his trees. All of these really, really talented asset creators are now technically like vanilla DLCs, right? So um, they're made for the game and, uh, and they won't clog up the game, so to speak as much as you know just having hundreds and hundreds of assets it kind of it kind of keeps things in check using uh like the actual purchasable dlc uh so as you can see here on this map i only noticed a little bit after starting this uh this process actually i noticed look at the trees they're all custom trees um it was kind of a pleasant surprise halfway through building all these roads and, uh, and I was like, oh great, that's awesome. I can, I can just use uh, all custom assets all the time. Like I don't have to, to redo a lot of areas that I will eventually be forced to in Dunswell. Because in Dunswell, I do want to go over the entire map and change out the vanilla trees for these custom trees. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but I do maybe want to use the prop changer mod in the future. So I can change all of the trees on the vanilla buildings to custom trees. I would of course use Mr. Mason's trees just so everything matches up. But I'm not 100% sure yet. It would be cool because it would affect Dunswell too and it would save me from a lot of trouble. <laughs> but I don't know, I might add it later on. So most of this map is going to remain the same as far as infrastructure goes so whatever infrastructure is down now uh is gonna stay for the most part there's some areas where it's gonna change such as right here there was this little two-lane road winding its way through the mountains um i wanted to create an expressway to downtown and this expressway is going to lead mostly into the industrial park that's going to be near these railroads
I really have to give a shout out to Teddy Radko. On this map, he's done a fantastic job at creating these super realistic, compact interchanges that just fit so well into the surrounding landscape. I don't know how he does it. Well, I have an idea, but a lot of it, I'm sure, is just patience and uh, a lot of mods. <laughs> um, speaking of mods, I am using a lot of road-related mods for the very first time in this series, and it's super exciting. Um, I'm using a combination of the, the node controller tool, the network multi-tool, a lot of move it, which I am used to. Um, but a lot of these mods, I wasn't aware existed before starting this series. I've kind of been living under a rock for the past couple of years as far as these, these really essential mods go. And I'm really excited to be finally picking them up and putting them to good use because they make building these really, really nice interchanges just so much more easy. Like check this out here. Using the network multi-tool, I believe this is, I might be confusing the node controller and the multi-tool, um, but using one of those two mods makes these loop type exits just so easy to make and the results are far better than anything I could ever do by hand. So at this point in time, I'm just having so much fun building this interchange, which by the way, is built off of an interchange in Montreal. Um, so that was the main inspiration for this one. I've taken this interchange many, many times on my commute to work when I lived in Montreal. It's a disaster, it's terrible, and I hated it, but I loved it at the same time. I loved it so much so that I thought I would build it in Rockport. So hopefully it performs a little better than the one in Montreal. Another thing I might add is using the network multi-tool and the node controller, it is so easy to create these smooth exits and on-ramps, way easier than trying to do it by hand. And it's not really game-breaking either. It doesn't do like these weird things unless you really push it, but it makes far better interchanges than you would ever be able to by hand. I really feel sorry for the console guys, <laughs> not having access to uh, these tools. But then again, you know, using a lot of know-how, there's so many tutorials nowadays on how to create these really nice interchanges on console. It just takes a little bit more precision and patience, but just look how easy this is, guys. Look, you can create these nice smooth on-ramps. I'm honestly amazed by how far this game has come. And I can't wait to see what kind of modding will be available for City Skylines 2. I'm sure it's going to be as crazy as the mod list is for City Skylines 1. So here is this interchange in its final form. I can't wait to see how this performs. Of course, on the uh, perpendicular highway, there's no traffic yet. But my idea for this highway, as you'll see, it's going to lead into downtown. So this highway leading into downtown will focus more on general commuters coming from outskirts of town and, and making their way into town as opposed to the other connection that we built a little earlier in this episode servicing mostly industrial. So uh, for the next hour or so I was busy building the street layout for the entire city and I'm gonna go over the city's zones here in just a little bit. But not until I build the highway leading into downtown. So very similar to Auckland, New Zealand, there is a windy highway making its way to downtown. The downtown core is kind of surrounded by uh, these, this highway loop, similar to a lot of American cities. And similar to Auckland as well, there's going to be a short but vital tunnel system around the downtown area. And this is kind of in its preliminary st stages. As far as like the underground infrastructure goes, I'm just literally just running a highway through downtown and I'm not going to be placing any exits or anything just yet and, uh, for the underground section at least. Um, but the highway does end right smack dab in the middle of the central business district. So again, this is going to be a very important connection for the people living on the outskirts of town who work downtown.
And I guess at this point I should mention that this episode will solely be focused on the city's starter infrastructure near the downtown area. So all the road and rail infrastructure uh, going in the downtown area, my goal was to build in this episode. And this is just to give me a general idea on how I'm going to get started with this city. Of course, as you can see, I have the whole coastal area, uh, the whole harbor front to build. So we're going to get into that pretty soon. Uh, but let's jump into the live play here. And I'm going to explain a little bit about what's happening and the different zones that I'm going to incorporate into the city before ending this episode. All right, here we are in the live play. And I'm just going to take a moment to explain how this area is going to flourish into. So on the left over here, you can see that I've sort of built up this port area off camera. And this is where we're going to see a mixture of luxury residential buildings that are right by the coast and a little bit of industrial using the fishing industries DLC. So I'm not sure what will go where, but expect that there'll be some sort of mixture between the two along the coast here. If we head on over here, on the other side of our rail station this will be solely industrial so this entire sort of valley area um, will be industrial so the main city's port will be here taking advantage of this rail line and we'll see what else we can stuff over here now i'm going to zoom on over to the other side of downtown over here where these streets are a little bit more more coagulated right the the density is a bit higher over here so this is going to be old town all right so you can see that the streets are not in a sort of grid pattern um, they're a little bit more janky <laughs> let's call it uh, so this is going to be old town where i guess the city's more historic district will be and then over here of course where we see this grid pattern this will be the central business district Okay, so this is where your big skyscrapers will be and all the, the city's main businesses. And you can see here that it's in a much more gritty pattern. Gritty as in a grid and not gritty as in like, you know, janky, whatever. <laughs> um, and as far as that, the rest goes, the city will sprawl out all the way to this corner and that corner and in all directions. And that'll be mostly... Uh, single-family homes and, and residential as you would find in a lot of Western cities. For the first little bit, uh, the first few episodes, I will be focusing on the downtown peninsula, um, probably starting in Old Town and then eventually expanding our way outwards. Uh, but I will, even though this series is completely plopped, I will be taking into consideration the city's demands and the city's services. I am playing with unlimited money, as you saw, uh, but I still want the city to be totally functional. Okay, so I'm not going to stray too far from the core gameplay. So with that being said, guys, I really hope you enjoy this series. Um, it's going to be a ton of fun, I think, and uh, leave me any suggestions. And I really want this series to have that same sort of Tim Buckton vibe going on, right? So I want, I want all the areas uh, to be... To have a sort of like lore background um but anyways that's all up in the air and uh and we'll see how the series progresses so that is it for me today thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to leave a like leave a comment consider subscribing to the channel and i'll catch you in the next episode